same time, uh, let's bring on board Devain Choksi as well, who joins in on the show. Devain, hi, good to have you on board. Let's uh, get in a perspective from you then on ITC. Given that uh, the stock price is going to be in focus, as we understand that BAT is preparing to uh, pair part of their stake uh, this week. How are you looking at um, what investors should be doing with the stock in light of this news? Sir, good morning, Gavin. Well, other fundamentals remain as strong as they were, and I think remaining, I think good, uh, uh, good, good potential. I think is continuing in each and every vertical of ITC. Uh, I feel that I think this take sell buy back uh, to the financial investors. Uh, I think is going to be a good thing for for the company. Generally, one has seen that uh, when you bring in higher amount of stake from the financial investors. The company's valuations eventually, I think, gets uh, re-rated, and probably I think you will see higher amount of uh, uh, I think valuation continuing, or maybe I think growing from here on. Uh, several places in the world where the companies are uh, run by the professionals and the promoters, the owners, they have relatively I think smaller stake. They continue to hold larger market capitalization. I believe I think that is the story unfolding for ITC. Being a professionally run and managed company, I believe that I think this company would possibly see higher amount of valuation unlocking, which up till now the shareholders have not seen of ITC. Likely to see higher amount of unlocking of the valuation in coming uh, periods. So I, I would believe that I think this is a good thing to happen for the company. Overall, as I said, the fundamentals of the business remaining extremely strong and convincing. It's an unlocking which is going to drive this particular stock uh, into the new orbit here after. Okay, I mean, get in your uh, thoughts then on HAL. That stock is uh, zooming higher and clearly seems to be defying uh, the trend that we're seeing within the broader markets, hitting an all-time high just yesterday. Of course, we have a lot of focus from the government on Make in India, um, and that really seems to have boosted the performance. HAL is the stock actually that I'm referring to. If we could pull that up uh, on your screens. Just wanted to get in your thoughts on HAL and other stocks within the entire defense space. So I think probably one of the best stocks in the entire PSU baskets that the uh, Western market is having. Uh, if you look at the uh, the financials of the company, comparatively in last five years, this particular company has had, I think, a steady run. It has been having a close to 20% kind of ROC uh, as far as I think their, uh, their earning ratios and the valuations are concerned. I think this particular company is still available at a good prospects, largely because of the fact that on one side, the government is putting significant amount of Make in India defense product uh, kind of an activity, and which is giving the trust to uh, companies like HL in a significant manner. I believe that I think this company remains a, a strong bet. Maybe it has uh, done as far as I think the prices are concerned. I think it is currently valued uh, fairly well. I believe that I think uh, the larger execution visibility is giving trust to this company and at the same time i think the uh, other proxy is not available in the market i think for investment that is where a majority of the funds are getting shifted into this company but overall i think we remain positive on this company and would believe that uh, any correction in the price would be a good opportunity to enter into the stock by the investors even, uh, you know, right now we just have a note that has come in uh, from Philip Capital on chemicals and, you know, chemicals overall as a sector seems like, you know, obviously we've seen a bit of a downturn coming in, a correction coming in, all these chemical names in the recent times. Uh, anything now that you find would be looking attractive in the chemical space, given that, you know, sequentially maybe we're seeing an improvement on a month on month basis in terms of uh, demand trends, stable prices that have come in from chemicals. Would you be looking at the sector? On the side, I think the commodity play within the chemicals because I think that is something which we uh, as outside investors would never understand us. The discussion that we would have, we have with I think many of the companies, we get a clear sense that on one side, the price regime is going to remain steady. That is the input cost is going to remain steady. On the other side, I think the uh, business condition in the global market is showing signs of improvement. In the last three quarters of the current financial year, I think the things have been relatively bad for some of these companies because of the higher input cost or higher inventory cost that they carried along. Now, in the fourth quarter, the outcome is that they are saying that the majority of the high cost inventory is out of the books. 
and now at least i think they have got the book which is mark to market as far as i think input to output is concerned i guess i think they will have mark to market situation which is favorable so uh, understanding is that i think though the numbers are not showing remarkable jump at this point of time understanding is that i think in subsequent quarters the things are likely to improve from what it is currently and we believe that i think those companies within this chemical space particularly i think those who are into the uh, contract research and manufacturing space they would have relatively better uh, outlook to talk about they like to, to see nothing better in the steady outlook to talk about in the financial year 20 for 25 so one can argue that yes i think the downside has probably been now limited maybe i think the improvement in the business condition would mean some amount of upside going forward we may be remaining positive uh, as far as our focus concerned Okay, understand how exactly you're looking at an AB Capital. Lots of brokerages coming out with their notes saying that the merger is going to resolve the issue of mandatory listing requirement of ABFL. Your take? So, I want to have uh, gone into detail with this particular uh, possibility. So, allow me to I think come back to it at some other point of time. Okay, maybe we will at some other point in time. But for now, check in on those. Go, take us through your top mid cap idea. when i guess uh, we believe that i think the currently automobile ancillary companies are remaining relatively more stronger play we have been seeing a exceptionally strong performance coming in from most of the oems and many of the strong ancillary companies have still been neglected by the market for a long period of time uh, they have had the situation of higher input cost and i think the margin protection to a certain extent but i believe i think that is now settled and i believe most of the companies are having a little bit better time to talk about so we believe that i think uh, auto ancillary could be i think a good pack to buy into the portfolio of course i am not mentioning names uh, only to the requirement of the regulations all right thanks devin for joining in and sharing with us your okay. top recommendation as well as your outlook on the markets let's move right on and here are some of